On today's show, beaters go public and MacBooks from 2015 go vintage. I'm Mike Cave Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple leaks, news and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell and you won't miss a thing. So yeah, first story today, iOS 15 and iPadOS 15 and watchOS 8 and tvOS, uh, the public betas are all now live. The one that isn't macOS Monterey. That is not uh, arrived yet. That does tend to come a little bit later, normally a week or two after the others go to public beta. But it kind of suggests there are still a few bigger bugs over there that need to be squashed before it's ready for prime time with the public. Uh, but yeah, I went ahead and I put uh, iOS 15 beta, the public beta, on my iPhone and on my iPad, which we're using to video, video now. So um, yeah. So, so far, so good. No problems at the moment. I think uh, my iPhone has used a little bit more battery life overnight, but we will see how that pans out. Um, the iPad, everything seems to be fine. Uh, at the moment, the video from here has paired with this and it seems to be better. So fingers crossed that this video will actually happen. But over the coming days, I will give you a bit more feedback on what uh, what differences I'm finding what stuff actually makes the most difference in the real world. Um, live text, I've already played with, that's kind of fun. But yeah, there is, uh, there's definitely some cool stuff in here. Next up, 2015 MacBooks are now vintage. Apple's 2015 MacBook, the 12 inch with its Core M processor and famously popular butterfly keyboard is now a vintage product. That means it doesn't get product updates, it doesn't get basically anything other than security patches from here on out. So this was kind of upsetting to me because I really like the uh, the 12 inch MacBook. It's one of those products that I think Apple was definitely on the right track but it was one of the ones that was kind of scuppered by Intel and chips that are far too hot. So the 2016 and 2017 models are still getting updates. They were sold until 2019, I believe. So uh, they've still got a little bit of life in them, but probably only one more OS, um, which is, again, a bit sad because I think the form factor was amazing and I would love to see it get refreshed with the uh, M1 or an M2 or something similar in the near future. I think that thin chassis with no fan, which is basically what we now have with the MacBook Air with Retina display, would make a really nice thing, as long as they could sort out the butterfly keyboard. So into some setup stuff, this one comes in from Brad Chapman. Hi, I'm Brad Chapman. I'm a composer, engineer, dozen of other hats, and I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm th 33 years old and have been an Apple guy since my first unibody MacBook Pro in 2008 to 2009, back when I was still at university. Still have my 2012 Mac Pro that I no longer use. Currently rocking the 2013 trash can maxed out. Factory Max, not 128 gigs of RAM or anything. Love your show. Started watching it daily for the past five months or so. Well, you've been here for about half of the life of the channel. If you want to know the gear that I've got, well, it's a lot. So this is into his audio stuff. Uh, and I, none of this means anything to me. A Juno 60 from 1982. A Behringer Monopoly. A Moog Grandmother, a Universal Audio Apollo 8P, Shadow Hills 500 series, a bus compressor, Martin Acoustic, Fender American Professional Jazz Bass, PRS Semi-Hollow Electric Guitar, TLM 103 Condenser Microphone. Real excited about the new MacBooks, as I believe the M1X should pack some serious power with more than enough for my needs, which can actually be pretty needy. 1 to 200 tracks of heavy VST instruments and audio plugins. But yeah, I work full time for a marketing agency seven and a half years and I also do freelance after hours. I hate the agency, so probably going to branch out and go freelance once I can get my hands on the new SOC and really finish my studio. Thanks for sharing the story and if you're really curious about any of the work, just go here, vvade.com, vvade.com. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, it's it's super cool to see these. And if you've got a setup you want me to share, david at sangwells.co.uk and uh, you can get on the show. And let's get into your iCave answers because that's what we do next. If you want to share a question, hashtag iCave answers down in the comments section and you'll get it read out on a future show. Evan Rogers asks, iCave answers, when do you see Apple discontinuing support for x86 architecture in macOS? Now this is one that we've covered a few times. I don't think they're going to discontinue support super quickly. I think we'll probably get at least one more operating system that uh, directly uh, supports Intel, and there will be years of security patches and stuff like that. But right now, they're still selling these things, so they're not gonna stop it super soon. 
However, what is going to happen is what's already happening, um, just like with Big Sur, not allowing you to use iOS and iPad apps on it, because obviously that requires the M1 processor. With Monterey, you've got even more so the new version of Maps. With the Globe version, that won't work with uh, an Intel system. Live text won't work with an Intel system. The blurry background on FaceTime calls won't work with an Intel system. So you're just going to start getting more and more of the new features that just aren't compatible with Intel systems. And that's kind of how they're going to push people over towards M, uh, M series chips. As far as we know, it's not because they are just deciding to nerf these things, but because the Intel chips aren't capable of running them because they uh, push on the neural engine and that kind of thing for the performance. So that's basically the way that I see it. I think we're probably going to get one or two more OS releases and then it'll be security patches from there on out. A Hughes asks, IK answers, what 4K monitor and keyboard would you recommend, assuming that I will use it now with the M1 Air or Mini and with the MacBook Pro M1X later? I do a mix of productivity, graphics, and video editing. Pro, not student. Thanks. So if you need something for pro video editing, pro graphics, then you are going to need a real monitor. So don't probably go down the line that I've gone with the uh, TVs. So the TVs are great if you want a cheap and cheerful way of getting big displays, um, a lot of screen real estate, which is what I wanted to do. But you will probably um, do better if you can find one of the ultra fines that Apple put out with um, LG. Those would be really good. Um, those are about as native Apple as you can find without going to the Pro Display XDR. Now, if you want to go for Pro De Display XDR, knock yourself out. Um, but I would probably also suggest going for a VESA arm rather than a $1,000 uh, display stand. Also from Ed Evan Rogers, IK Vances, what are your thoughts on Loki? So I'm going to try and keep this uh, quite vague because obviously spoilers and I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. I haven't watched yesterday's episode that came out yet, um, but I really like the, the angle that the series is taking. Um, it feels a bit to me like uh, Legends of Tomorrow, um, which is one of the DC CW shows, um, which just has a lot of time jumping and trying to fix the timeline and all that sort of stuff. It feels more kind of almost Ant-Man heisty uh, and kind of detective show. Uh, it's got that cool 70s vibe that I quite like I think it looks really cool uh, but I did spot that they were mixing in like the 70s bubble CRT style displays with uh, I think I saw some Keychron um, mechanical keyboards in there uh, with the the white and black and orange keys um, but yeah I'm, I'm enjoying the show I really like the aesthetic of it Tom Hiddleston is just basically great and everything um, and yeah the supporting cast like you would not recognize Owen Wilson in this uh, until he opens his mouth. Cario Cario 54321 asks, IK answers, what do you believe the reason was for Apple keeping the 2017 21.5 non-retina iMac in production after introducing the Apple Silicon model? Yeah, so Apple have kept the, uh, the basest of the base models uh, in the lineup. And I think it's because, number one, Apple probably needs to keep the lower price point for their education customers at this point. So that would be my first thought. I think that when the M2 chip comes out, that they will probably introduce an iMac with that M2, and they will probably keep the M1 model around and drop the price to where that one was in order to give it that uh, that education price point that they need of like 9.99. So that's my thoughts on why they've kept that base model around. But I also do think that they will release a 24 inch with the M1X as well. The Golden S asks, IK answers, chances for a two in one MacBook. Basically an HP Spectre X360 MacBook Edition. I don't think they're going to do two-in-ones. I don't think two-in-ones is a thing. I don't think they care about two-in-ones. I don't think they're going to make MacBooks with touchscreens. I thought I'd sing this answer for you because we kind of covered it yesterday. Um, if you want a touchscreen, get an iPad and you can have a keyboard with it and then that will make it a two-in-one. Um, if you want a MacBook, get a MacBook. I don't think the two will cross anytime soon. Marcin Kovalchek. Do you think that Apple will ever expand to home devices such as AI vacuums, etc.? Probably with $600 wheels. I think HomeKit needs to expand uh, to encompass things like vacuums a little bit better because I think it's one of the things that they are a bit weak on at the moment uh, from what I've heard. But again, uh, as everyone knows, I'm terrible at automation stuff and it's not something that I've done yet. Um, I can't see Apple releasing their own AI vacuum, but never say never. What if we found out that the car department is actually building robot vacuum cleaners? Mac Daddy, 
IK Vances, at one point you mentioned dipping a toe into the home kit area, so I have a question. I thought Thread was the new protocol to let all kinds of things talk to each other, and the HomePod Mini had Thread built in too. But now I'm hearing of a different protocol, the name of which escapes me at the moment. That includes Apple, Google, etc. What's the future on HomeKit communication? So I think it's Matter that's the one that Google and Apple and everyone have uh, signed up to, and Amazon and a few others. Thread might be the one though. I I, I had a quick look online, couldn't find the details uh, on which one they'd actually done. But uh, yeah, I think at the moment it's still a little bit kind of disparate. There's too many different standards and too many different um, hubs that you need. For this thing, you need to have this hub. And for this thing, you need to have this hub. I, I just want to have a HomePod mini or an Apple TV and that just links everything together, which I think is the idea. Uh, I just don't think it's there yet as far as I know. But as I say, I don't know much about this stuff. And Phil Rosa Leak asks, which way do you think Apple will go with the following? The new upcoming MacBook Air will have the same chassis size as the current one with a larger screen or the same screen size, but with a smaller chassis. Thanks. I think they're gonna shrink the chassis uh, and have the same screen size because I think the MacBook Pros having the even size screens, the 14 and the 16, and then maybe that opens up a possibility for a MacBook Air with 13 and 15 sizes. That might work so that it kind of differentiates them a little bit, but it also means then that they're using different parts and it becomes slightly more expensive. So honestly, don't really know, um, but I would assume that they would go smaller and lighter with the Air than they do with the Pro. So that's it for today's show, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Don't forget to submit all your stuff because when there's no news, it's really, really helpful. See you later.